Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. Got a partner over here today helping me out. His name is Guinness, and we are going to be introducing a Microsoft 365 security assessment that you can use across your own tenant or your customer tenants that came out from CISA called Scuba Gear. Many of you may be familiar with this tool as it's getting very popular, but in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to run that tool. I'm gonna to show you some common debugging techniques, especially for using this against multiple tenants. And then I'm also gonna show you a fork that I made in which I'm mapping all of these policies and recommendations also to the CIS controls, which I feel like is a little bit more powerful. Many of us are looking for checklists or baselines today to match our stack and the policies we've configured within these tenants, especially at our customer level. So this is a very powerful tool because it gets really in depth as far as all the recommendations that it provides. As always, if this content's helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so just a few things to note before we get into the actual assessment here. CISA introduced this secure cloud business applications codenamed SCUBA project, which includes some of the baseline assessments for both Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace. And that's what the actual assessment is doing on an automated fashion for us. In this link that I'll link below here on the video, you also have some of the guides that you can follow for the various suite offerings like Azure Active Directory, for instance. And then this is what they call the minimum viable secure configuration baseline. And so within here, they have all of the recommendations and configurations that you would want to have across this. And it includes a lot of the uh, add-on information you would want as well too, like licensing considerations, along with some links to some external Microsoft resources as well too. So the assessment is actually running through and automating the collection of evidence for you and spitting that out into a single report which we'll see once we go through that section. But I just wanted to note here that this is available for you to download and I'll link that below. The assessment tool itself is built and based on GitHub here as far as the repository goes. And in it, you have all of your instructions and installation components as well too. It's mostly just running PowerShell and you can do a couple of different commands here to get this running. You could either fork this yourself and clone it down, or you could just simply download the zip file here as well too to get started. Just to note though that I have actually forked this over into my own repository, and I'm actually going in and mapping all of these controls as well to the CIS controls. So it's just another level, I guess, as well too that you could have for more reporting. So if you wanted to, you could come over to my repository, go up to the top level here and click on download zip. After that's done, you'll want to extract the zip file and take out the folder scuba gear main and you'll place it in some location in which you can run the script. Again, that could be on your desktop. It could be in a documents folder, but just note that it's going to spit out a report into that folder as well too. So within here, I can traverse back into the location that it's in on my device. And then from here, the first thing that you'll want to do is run up the setup folder, which basically installs all your prerequisites that you need as well here too. So you'll probably just want to start putting that in and it'll be the setup PS1. You'll hit enter here and it's gonna ask you to run this for security warning as, as well too. You might have that or you might have a message come up about your execution policy as well too. You want your execution policy set to unrestricted for this as well or else it will not be able to pull in all of these dependencies for you. So this will just take a few minutes and I'll let this load here and I will be back once this is done. While that's actually loading, I'm going to go ahead and traverse into the scuba gear main folder here. There's only one thing that you'll want to modify and that's the run scuba PS1. This is the primary file that we're using to run the scripts that are going on behind the scenes to pull all this information across our suite offerings. But if I open this up, I can open it up, up in a Word doc or a notepad doc, I should say. And within here, there's only a couple of things that you might want to change. So you have your product names here, and this is all in the readme section, by the way, on the GitHub page. So just note that this is all there, but you can decide if you wanted to exclude certain product names from the report that you're doing as well too. And then you can also determine your endpoint um, as well. And this is for Power Platform. So it's set by default to USGov. You might want to just change this into a prod section if you're commercial. Um, and just run it that way as well too for getting the most information from the Power Platform standpoint. You can also change where the reports are put out as well too from the outpath. 
as well. So just know there's a few things that you can change here um, if you wanted some custom configuration, but overall, you're gonna leave most of this how it is for the most part. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file, and then I'm going to go ahead and exit. Okay, so now we're back, and we also have the uh, setup file that finishes well too. This is just, again, downloading all of our dependencies for the different modules that we're gonna need to run the script. So after this is done, you can essentially just come back into your, to your command line and we're gonna do the run scuba PS1 file here. And you're gonna get this security warning prompt about six times or per product that you put in there. So if you didn't change anything, it's about six times that you're gonna to have to hit the R, which is the run once. And this is again, if you look at the output here, you're just going through all of your um, various PS1 files here. Once that finishes, you're gonna start getting into an authentication process because it's wanting to authenticate on a per product basis. So as in Defender, Azure Active Directory, everything like that. Do you need to be a global admin as at a high level? They get into more granular permissions if you look at their documentation, if you wanted to scope this down. But essentially here, I'm already logged in, so I can use that user. Otherwise, if you're not logged in, you'd have to be prompted for MFA as well too. And this will run, and you'll see this up here as well. It'll keep authenticating and keep giving you prompts for each product. And so you'll just continue to sign in with that same global administrator for the tenant that you want this assessment to be run on. You'll also see that it'll redirect for some of the Defender commandlets as well too. And again, you're just signing in. If this is your first time signing in, you're likely going to be seeing a consent form as well too for some of the graph API permissions that you need to consent to as part of the consent process at the very beginning. Okay, so once this is done, a browser window will automatically open. And if it doesn't, usually will prompt you to say, hey, where do you want to open this? What's your default method? And in this case, you could choose your default browser as well too to open it. If you did not, for some reason, like exit out of that or anything, you have in your folder structure now a reports folder, and in it will include the latest run that you've made, and you can link out into the uh, browser as well too from the HTML file that it spits out. But essentially here, this is pretty cool because it gives you all of the products that it went through, and it gives you the passes, the warnings, and the tests that failed. And then some of the manual checks, because obviously there's only so much that you can look through from a programmatic standpoint versus what is going to be collected from maybe integrations with third parties and things like that. So within here, you have you know all of your um, levels of control for the baseline. And then in it, you have your requirements and the green basically says that it passed. The gray is basically either a warning or um, you know a assessment that can't be fully automated. And then the red is that you don't have this in place. And so some of these things you got to take with a grain of salt. And luckily it does look for things like licensing within the tenant. So things like in this tenant for me, I don't have the premium level licensing, so P2 licensing. I have business premium within this tenant. So I cannot turn on the identity protection features here that included or are included with ADP2. And so this is one that I can actually set up, but it's good to note that it's good. They're actually putting in the uh, licensing concerns as well. You'll notice that this is what I added though. I added the CIS controls here and I made sure that they're being exposed based off of previous references from Microsoft and the CIS organization, uh, along with, you know, just the V8 standard that is out today and published, which I'll also link below in the documentation that's part of my blog as well too. So within some of these settings, you'll find that the user impact is pretty high if you have ever done this before or have implemented certain features. So it's best to still, if you're not familiar with the features, to roll them out and test them internally at first to see fully what user impact will look like. Some of these, like the session length and the browser sessions that you can control with conditional access policies, um, again, have a bit more of a disruption to the end user as well too through the reprompts that they have to get not only on their web applications, but in their thick clients on their uh, mobile devices and also um, on the physical clients as well too on their desktop. So just be aware of that. It can get really disruptive and there'll be a lot of things that come back at you. Um, some of these other features here are pretty standard, obviously, like having MFA for all users and having the ability to block legacy authentication. 
So just note that all of these are in here and are something that you can evaluate. But overall, again, it's a pretty in-depth um, assessment of what you're trying to look for within a tenant. So one thing from a multi-tenant front that I wanted to touch out on as well too is just a gotcha that I experienced and I think is a known bug based off the issues on the GitHub page for Scuba. And this is essentially basically caching certain credentials or information from the previous tenant that you've run, causing some errors to occur whenever you're trying to run it for a second tenant. And so what you can do today is use this disconnect MS graph call, and this will basically remove the session that's in there. And this happens today even if you've closed PowerShell down, waited a few days, came back, tried to run the script again in the same folder, trying to use different client credentials or global credentials for a different tenant, it still might cache those for you. So you'll want to use this to just basically clear the session and then you'll go through and, and run it on another tenant and not have any problems there. All right, guys, so that's everything I had for you today on the CISA assessment tool for Microsoft 365. A couple of final thoughts. I really wish it had some telemetry and recommendations for Endpoint Manager or Microsoft Intune, as many of us live out of there today for device management. There's a lot of policies and configurations that you can have within Endpoint Manager. I understand that conditional access is kind of an all-encompassing scope for delivering the rights and things of that nature, but there's a lot of micro policies that you could basically give a lot of recommendations on within Intune that I'd love to see in the future. If you guys find the CIS controls helpful, I've been thinking about doing other compliance related controls, mapping them as well too, like HIPAA and CMMC. So if you guys have any recommendations there or any feedback on that, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, as I mentioned earlier, like and subscribe if you guys wanna see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.